Glaucoma is a serious, lifelong eye disease that can lead to vision loss if not controlled. But for most people, glaucoma does not have to lead to blindness. That's because glaucoma is controllable with modern treatment, and there are many choices to help keep glaucoma from further damaging your eyes, which we will talk about in today's video. Welcome back to Eye School with me, Dr. D, where I teach you about products and treatments related to dry eye syndrome and eye beauty so you can have healthy, beautiful, comfortable eyes. Give a little love tap on that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the latest to eye tips and tricks I have for you. So before we get into glaucoma treatments, we need to first talk about glaucoma. Glaucoma is a serious lifelong eye disease that can lead to vision loss if it's not controlled, but for most people, it doesn't have to lead to blindness, and that's because with modern treatment, we can control it, and there are a lot of choices to help keep glaucoma from further damaging your eyes. So glaucoma is an eye disease that causes loss of sight by damaging a part of the eye called the optic nerve. The nerve sends information from your eyes to your brain, and when glaucoma damages your optic nerve, you begin to lose patches of vision, and these are usually side vision patches or peripheral vision. That's why it's so important to see your eye doctor regularly, even if you have no symptoms, because glaucoma is a disease without symptoms that affects your vision peripherally and you don't tend to notice it until it's quite severe. There are also several types of glaucoma. All glaucoma is not created equal. There's actually many types. Often the cause of high pressure in the eye can help tell the type of glaucoma and then the best treatment for it. So here's some common types that I have to tell you about. So it is important to know which type of glaucoma you have because the cause of the high pressure can really help influence how we're going to treat it. So we're gonna go over the most common types. Now by far and away, the most common types is primary open angle glaucoma, POAG or POAG, I call it. Um, this is a chronic, really common type. So the most common type in open angle glaucoma, aqueous fluid, that's the fluid inside your eye, drains too slowly and the pressure inside the eye builds up. It usually results from aging of your drainage channel, which doesn't work as well over time. However, younger people can also get this type of glaucoma and POAG, primary open angle glaucoma, is one that definitely tends to run in family. So if you have a mom, dad, brother, sister with primary open angle glaucoma, you should definitely get checked for it because it does run in families. The second type of glaucoma is called normal tension glaucoma, and this is a form of open angle glaucoma that's not related to high pressure. So it's possible to have glaucoma even if your pressure reads normal. Now normal pressure runs between 10 and 20, but I always tell people when we're looking for glaucoma, the pressure only has to be too high for your eye not my eye or anybody else's eye. And so normal tension glaucoma is when you have what we would consider normal pressure, but you are unusually sensitive to that pressure regardless. The, this type can be due to reduced blood supply to the optic nerve that may play a role in normal tension glaucoma. So clinically, I like to look for patients who have migraines, who have Raynaud syndrome, or who have poor perfusion in general. We also, in normal tension glaucoma, want to look for um, are you well perfused? Are you drinking plenty of water? If you are on a blood pressure medication, not taking that at night because perfusion overnight tends to be an issue with normal tension glaucoma. Now, those first two types of glaucoma I told you about are called open angle glaucoma because the drainage system in the eye lives within the angle of the eye. In both of those types of glaucoma, the angle is open, the drainage system is conceivably working. Now, the next type of um, glaucoma is angle closure glaucoma, and you can have acute or chronic angle closure glaucomas. Well, we'll talk about the acute kind. That happens very quickly, and those of Asian and Native American descent are at a higher risk for this particular form of glaucoma. It occurs when the drainage system of the eye becomes blocked and a sudden rise in pressure results that requires immediate emergency medical care. The signs of an acute angle closure attack are serious and can include blurred vision, a severe headache, eye pain, nausea, vomiting, or even seeing rainbow-like halos around 
lights. Occasionally this can happen without symptoms, similar to open angle, but usually it happens with symptoms. So a couple of other points about angle closure. Angle closure happens more in older folks with high plus prescriptions who have their natural lens still. So this means you're getting older, you're maybe a plus three, four, or five in your glasses prescription, and you still have your natural lens. And that's because hyperopes plus prescriptions tend to have shorter eyes than myopes. And as you get older, your natural lens puts down more layers and gets bigger, bigger, bigger. Well, that can squeeze your angle shut. And then if you go to the eye doctor and get dilated, for, for instance, that can cause an angle closure attack. So those are some of the risk factors. Secondary glaucoma is another type of glaucoma, and it happens as a result of a different eye condition or disease, like an inflammation, a trauma, or a tumor. It's possible to have a trauma, and then many, many years later, have what we call angle recession, or damage to that drainage angle, that results in your eye not being able to drain the fluid appropriately, the pressure rising, and glaucoma occurring. The same is true for chronic inflammation. So I made an entire video about uveitis, and inflammation that can cause secondary glaucoma in the video that I'll link here above. But that would be a secondary type of glaucoma if you got it from having uveitis for a long time. There's other types of secondary glaucoma that can happen with neovascular issues um, in diabetics and things like that. And if you are interested in a video specifically about secondary glaucomas, just let me know below. I can expand upon that later. So let's get into, you know, are you always going to go blind with glaucoma? Is this like a... A, a, a sentence to blindness. Well, treatment is not going to be able to reverse damage that has already occurred, but it can prevent further vision loss. And glaucoma does not have to lead to blindness because there are many treatments available. So let's talk about those treatments. It can usually be treated with medicines, laser surgery, glaucoma surgery, or some combination of these treatments. Medicines or eye drops are typically the first line therapy, and then laser can be just effective as a first choice. So your optometrist or ophthalmologist, whoever is managing your glaucoma, may be talking to you as about first line therapies being medicines or laser procedures or a combination of both. Your treatment is up to you and your doctor. So eye doctors use many medicines to treat glaucoma and these drops lower the pressure inside the eye. Often people with glaucoma must take these medicines for life to control the pressure and limit their vision loss because if you stop taking the medicine, the pressure will go back up. The pressure only stays down while you're on the medicine. Glaucoma medicines are usually usually in the form of drops, but we have a couple that come in pills or ointments, and they work to lower the amount of aqueous fluid produced and or improve your fluid drainage in your eye. All glaucoma medicines may cause side effects, some of which can be uncomfortable, and a few side effects can be quite serious, but those side effects are not common. The biggest side effect that I see as a dry eye specialist is that topical glaucoma therapy typically causes a lot of ocular surface issues. We like to say the ocular surface pays for the sins of the trabecular meshwork, which is the drainage system. If you're having dryness in concurrence with your glaucoma medications, you definitely want to see a dry eye specialist. You do want to take your medicine as scheduled when you have glaucoma because skipping doses of your medicine might put your vision in danger and it can mislead your doctor too. Be sure to tell your doctor if you've missed doses or taken extra doses or anything like that. The second type of surgeries or um, interventions for glaucoma are laser procedures, laser surgeries. Some people may need eye surgery to control their glaucoma. Lasers can be super useful for treating glaucoma because they avoid cutting and they have a lower chance of complications compared to glaucoma surgery. So like minimally invasive is what I would say. So laser trabeculoplasty or selective laser trabeculoplasty SLT improves the outflow of aqueous fluid. A laser is used to make between 50 and 100 tiny burns in your trabecular meshwork. Remember, that's the drainage system. And the procedure opens up that mesh-like outflow pathway to improve the drainage of fluids from the eye. Sometimes your doctor performs this procedure over two visits, and the benefit of this treatment may last for years, but it's not a cure. Important to note, this is done by an ophthalmologist, not your optometrist in most states, but in some states it is. Your optometrist may be working with a glaucoma specialist in order to get you this care. The next type of laser procedure is a peripheral iridotomy. This is most commonly used to treat narrow angles 
angle or angle closure glaucoma. I remember we talked about that. This is a laser beam that creates a tiny hole in the colored part of the eye, the iris. This is gonna let the pressure in the front of the iris become the same as the pressure behind the iris. And as a result, the iris is gonna move away from the drainage angle so that the aqueous fluid can resume draining normally. Because remember, anatomically an angle closure, closed angle, right? So we have to make another hole so the fluid can drain. This procedure is usually tolerated really well. People don't usually feel any pain, although some report a slight stinging during laser procedures. Most patients will take it easy the day of their treatment, but you can go back to your normal routine the following day. And you need to keep taking your medicines even after laser surgery, typically but this is always gonna to defer to what your doctor says, of course. Laser surgery is usually successful, but there are some risks, and these include a temporary, generally short-term increase in your eye pressure, temporary inflammation of the eye, and possibly a slightly increased risk of developing cataracts. If medicine or laser surgery does not relieve your eye pressure, then the patient may need glaucoma surgery, and we have several options in glaucoma surgeries. So we have filtering surgery. Filtering surgery creates a new path through the eye's tissues to let fluid drain from the eye. The most common filtering surgery is called a trabeculectomy or a sclerostomy. The surgeon makes a small opening in the white part of the eye, the sclera, to create a new outflow path. We call it a bleb and it's usually up here superiorly so that it's hidden by your eyelid and not cosmetically visible. The next option is a drainage implant surgery. So that's sometimes performed when a person is not suited for trabeculectomy or when your bleb, your trabeculectomy, has failed before. So depending on the type of implant used, the surgery is called valve shunt um, surgery. In these procedures, the surgeon inserts a tiny tube through the sclera into the front part of the eye behind the iris, and this tube becomes a path for fluid to drain away. And when you've had this, your eye doctor can actually see this within the anterior chamber of your eye. Fun fact, when I was in residency at Bascom Palmer, I saw a patient one time with four drainage tubes in one eye. Next we have canaloplasty. So this is a newer procedure that lowers pressure and is performed within the eye wall but that does not actually penetrate the eye. While this surgery is safer than filtering surgery, it does not provide as profound a reduction in the pressure. We also have MIGS, or minimal invasive glaucoma surgeries, and those are a set of newer FDA approved procedures that lower eye pressure. These approaches currently include trabectome and the eye stent. Both of these approaches work by bypassing the blockage and the drain of the eye to help fluid flow through the natural drain and do not require artificial pathways for fluid drainage to areas outside the eye. Next, we have laser cyclophotocoagulation. It's used for severe cases of glaucoma and eliminates tiny areas of the ciliary body that make aqueous fluid. This turns down the faucet, right? So you're making too much fluid, let's turn that faucet down. Laser cyclophotocoagulation requires a numbing block to the eye to prevent pain with the procedure. Now with any surgery, there are risks and glaucoma surgeries do have some possible risks like a higher chance of getting cataracts, infection, or leaking of the incision. You can also end up with too low of a pressure or hemorrhages inside the eye. So I hope that kind of covered the waterfront in terms of what is glaucoma, what does it do, what are the types, and what are some of the treatments. Happy to go into further detail on any of these things in future videos. Please leave me a comment down below if there's something else you want to hear about or if you just wanna make comments about your glaucoma treatment. And if you've made it this far and you're not already subscribed to this channel, please hit that button and the bell so that you don't miss notifications. That is it for today's iSchool class is dismissed. <laughs>